The clock is ticking. Here's your look at the DC Collectibles Doomsday Clock Rorschach and Mime Action Figure 2-Pack. DC Collectibles brings to life the characters featured in the smash hit comics series Doomsday Clock by Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. This action figure pairing of Rorschach and Mime are in a 7-inch scale and are loaded with very dynamic articulation points. Collect all three two-packs for the full experience. So the very first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall these figures stand. I think they're going to be about the same height. Now taking it to the very tops of their heads, first starting with Rorschach, we're going to stop the tape measure right there. The figure stands 6.8 inches in height, which in centimeters works out to be, let me switch that over for you, 17.4 centimeters tall. Now we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing with Mime, putting it right to the very top of Mime's head. Mime actually is a little bit taller than Rorschach. According to the Ultra Measuretron 5000, the figure stands 6.9 inches in height, which works out, once again, to centimeters at 17.5 centimeters tall. The figures come with accessories, but I feel like more of the accessories, if not all the accessories, are belonging to Rorschach and not Mime. We'll run through those together. For starters, of course, the trademark fedora that sits atop of Rorschach's head is made here of a soft plastic. It's colored in about the same color as what he's going to have on his trench coat. I'll show you that on him in a second. Speaking of also trademarks, he comes with his trademark grapple gun. The grapple hook is not removable. It's been cast in probably what looks to be silver or likely it probably was done in a different color and then painted in silver. The handle has been painted in a darker brown. And some nice little copper colors have been added in there also. It's a nice little accompanying piece. I would feel like Rorschach would be naked without both his fedora and his grapple gun, so I'm glad that they come included with those. And then they also come, or what I believe is an alternate pair of hands specifically for Rorschach. I don't believe these are Mime's hands. Mime's hands are in the white gloves. So these are just a variation of gloves that you can give Rorschach here. Now if you want to change out the hands, you just simply just grab the figure, grab the forearm, and wiggle the hand right off, and then replace it with the hand that you want to use. Of course, it would make some sense to know that which hand goes which place, but then you can get the variation of the brown glove or the black glove. One thing that is interesting about that is it is on the opposite ends. So if you want to have, say, the grapple gun on this side, you're going to have to be using then this glove, this colored glove versus the black glove, because, well, again, the black glove is just a closed fist. Um, I kind of, I don't know, I kind of like the darker glove because it's a nice darker contrast because this color is so real close to his to his outfit. I know, depending on, again, which which dis design you want to go with here. I'm just going to pop that back off, revisit the glove, and then if you want to put the grapple gun into his hand, the handle is a little on the broad side, so when you put it in, I find it always is easiest to put it in on an angle and then just twist it around. Unfortunately, though, the finger isn't sculpted in such a way that it fits to look as if it's actually hitting the trigger. Now, if you were to take this, and let's say we use this hand, just once again fit this through. This is a little bit more of a snug, snugger fit. There we go. Uh, it doesn't actually fit as well. Uh, the handle is quite actually quite broad on this. Uh, yeah, getting it into his hand, it just doesn't sit right. Unless something is supposed to be done differently, but it's pretty straightforward how it's supposed to sit. Like I said, that handle is way, way too big. An alternative, I'm sure, is to heat the hand, kind of just spread it as further out as you can get it to get it around the grip or the handle area of the grapple gun. So that sort of has decided things for me when it comes to displaying the figure for the time being, immediately out of packaging, minus having to use some heat and some boiling water to soften this up, I'll probably end up just using this hand to hold the grapple gun. And also in case you were wondering how it looks with the fedora, just plant that over top of Rorschach's head. 
Why don't we actually have a look at Rorschach first, then we'll have a look at mine. In all honesty, actually, my favorite figure, sort of giving it away before this review is over, I think I'm actually leaning a little bit more towards Mime as liking that figure a little bit more than I like this figure here. It's not a bad figure, don't get me wrong. It has all the elements here of Rorschach, but it seems like the one thing that it doesn't have, the one thing that I find kind of ruins the figure for me, is actually the face sculpt. Normally, Rorschach, of course, a man whose mask will vary by expression, they seem to have gone with an expression that I find doesn't work for the figure. And it's not to say that this isn't one of the faces that he has in the comics, but in all honesty, I find it's like one of the worst Rorschach head sculpts I've ever seen. Here, you clearly have a line indicator of its mouth, its nose, the areas around its eyes. Again, while that may be accurate in the comics, I'm sure it's varied frequently throughout the pages. I'm surprised that they settled on this head sculpt. This one so more clearly shows a face in which Rorschach's mask is really supposed to be an interpretation. It's supposed to be just splotches of ink, and then that's just supposed to make up his face. Here, it just seems like it's so more obviously, this is his face, literally his nose, his eyes, his mouth. Not have to admit, I'm not too crazy about it. The fedora sort of can work in your way, in your favor. You can angle it further down, so it looks a little bit more Rorschach for me, at least. It's really, I think, the eyes, if you want to call it these eyes, kind of looks like he's got eyes, and then he's got, like, erupted lava coming out from his eyebrows. Kind of looks like it's something... He kind of looks like Gene Simmons a little bit. So I'm going to keep the fedora actually relatively low, so you don't see that too much. And it actually plays better into the character as well. Uh, unfortunately, you can't bring the head too much further down either because the scarf sort of takes up a lot of neck real estate. You can't bring the head down any bit further than that. You can bring it up a little bit more. I would love to have brought the head down a little bit further just to kind of help aid in hiding that face sculpt or that face paint. It's really not necessarily the sculpt. It's obviously the paint. I find it's detracting from this figure. Of course, he's got his trademark... Uh, trench coat going on here. The strappings are separate and they're just made up of soft plastic. In fact, actually all of its torso, his torso, is made up of a soft plastic except for the arm. The arms are made of a denser plastic. It's painted where it needs to be painted, I suppose. It's not to say that they would have to have added additional paint to this. It has just the right amount. The legs are, I'm sure, something that would be of similar use to like a Joker almost similarly pinstriped here against the backdrop of the purple fabric. And he's got the brown boots here. I like the cuff, the lower cuff that's draping its way over top of his shoes. Again, this is, could likely be something that we will eventually see with a Joker. As I'm sure both of these figures, this one specifically the mine, clearly makes use of the brand new, uh, was it the Icons line? I can't even remember what it is. It's the Essentials line, that's right. So this is clearly using an Essentials line figure. In fact, I'm certain it's the exact same body mold as many of the figures that we've gotten, like the Batman, the Superman, and uh, even like the Flash also used that same body mold. There's very few that haven't used that body mold, but wondering if maybe this will find its way a light of day, perhaps for a future Joker figure, which I don't think we have gotten yet for the Essentials line. It seems to, like there's You'll pardon my ignorance for my lack of memory for this, but it just seems like we've gotten such a big gap between like the last time we got the Essentials figures and like now. Maybe we'll see some in future future releases in the upcoming months or so, but maybe as a future option, this could certainly be used for Joker. I'm certain this these legs would be used for Joker. Somebody's like, you're spending a lot of time talking about Rorschach's legs. Why don't we talk about his posability instead? So his head rotates back and forth, in theory, it could... Uh, I have to look at his face again. In theory, his head can rotate all the way around. The collar is fairly soft on his jacket. And like I said, there are limitations based on the fact that he's got the scarf happening right there. The scarf is of a soft plastic, but not nearly enough that you can do anything with the head you know, to bend further down. Shoulders rotate all the way around. That would actually go both ways, both arms. He also has a swivel in the bicep. He has a double hinge on the elbow, and then he also has a rotation in the hand, a hinge also happening back and forth. 
restrictions certainly are there. I mean, you feel as if there's all the inner workings of a body underneath all that, but of course a tre trench coat, no matter what the fabric would be, material would be that they used over top of it, of course, makes restrictions a lot more obvious. You can't really rotate the waist or anything like that. S legs split out to about, to about there. Forward to about there. Back to, well, about there. There's a swivel at the top of the thigh, a double hinge knee. Where's that double hinge? There's that double hinge right there. And the foot. It angles back and forth, up and down. By no way, means, by no way do I necessarily say the figure doesn't look accurate to the comics. Very much so. This could be a, one of the looks that Rorschach has in the comics, but being that his face varies so frequently, you would think, though, that they could have gotten a better head sculpt. Uh, ultimately, what I think that they chose to go with when it comes to Rorschach is really an inferior-looking head sculpt. It's supposed to be suggested that he's got a face, not ever really very obviously put in front of you, and yet I find like the figure very obviously puts in front of you, there's his eyes, there's his nose, there's his mouth. So Rorschach, I feel, is a bit of a disappointment. Moving along, had to wait for the dramatic pause right there, to what I think is a better looking figure, in all honesty. Here is Mime. Mime is clearly, as you can see, what looks to be a same, similar, if not exact same body as what we've gotten from the Essentials lineup. Here, it looks like it's been cast in black plastic and then simply painted white over top of that. That can become a bit of a problem down the road when it comes to rotating the legs and anything that would requ require swiveling or moving over top of that paint. The only thing that seems to be so far suffering from this is rotating the hands. I've gotten a fair bit of white paint that's flaked off of the gloves. Uh, up here, this is also something I'm really worried about too, is crunching the ab back and forth. I'm not going to be doing this at nausea. Certainly excessive use of this will probably cause some damage, but I worry if paint flaking will start developing, especially like right around where those two joints are sort of rubbing, these two parts are rubbing against one another. I like the head sculpt actually quite a bit. Can't imagine that it's been reused from any other figure. It's possible it could have very well been. I wanted to look at this and think maybe that's Superman's head sculpt, but I don't think it is. I think it is a head sculpt unique to Mime. He's got a little bit of the white paint across his hair. And of course, trademark things of Mimes. He's got primarily black and white, mostly black with, you know, of course, little sprinklings of white. The white has been painted over top of the existing black plastic. As a result, some of the white paint, you can sort of see it comes across a little goopy, a little more chalky, especially the areas around the feet, where maybe a second coat, this one right here on this shoe, second coat of white paint maybe could have helped a little bit there as well. One of the big problems with the Essentials figures, as I've certainly seen with my fair share of reviewing them, is that the ankles become excessively loose. I still wish that there was a workaround to it. There's something about the Essentials figures that have given me more problems with ankles than any other of the DC collectible figures that we've looked at before. I hope maybe that this is not going to be a reoccurring problem where future figures are all going to have loose ankles. So far, mine isn't terrible. He doesn't have any of the problems that I just expressed, but it does feel like there is potential down the road. Yeah, I can feel like those feet are a little on the loose side just a little on the loose side. There's the back of the figure, by the way. As you can see, mostly all of it has been just molded plastic. It's only the white paint, and it's only really the paint that is in white, that is the only part that's been added over top of the existing figure. Uh, I guess that's not 100% true. Possibly they've added the black paint to the sleeves. I can't imagine that they would have painted full arm flesh, whereas painting just the tops of the sleeves on this color of plastic probably made a little bit more sense. But again, I like the head sculpt. I got real no complaints with the head sculpt. In all honesty, I think it's better than the one we got with Rorschach. And Rorschach, you would think, would be the standout character of the two. Nonetheless, let's have a look at the posability on Mime. His head rotates all the way around. A much more generous amount of posability on this guy's head than what Rorschach had. The arms rotate all the way around. By the way, I have, may have mentioned this when we had a look at the essentials, but I really like the profile, the mold of the torso. It's very heroic, it's very muscular, of course, but it's not a very wide torso. I like that. Upper torso does have a crunch. Still worrisome a little bit about that paint flaking off. 
the waist also swivels back and forth. Um, the arms, which kind of sidetracked from, the arms move out like that. And of course you can rotate them all the way around via a hinged joint in there. A swivel on the bicep, a double hinge on the elbow, a swivel also in the hand, which also rotates the hand back and forth. Uh, when we get down to the waist, the, this part, the thigh area, I should say, the legs hinge out. They have a swivel on the three-quarter cut of the thigh. It just so happens a little stiffer on this figure, but uh, that certainly, I'm not going to find myself rotating the leg too frequently anyways, but it is really, really stiff, right? Right there, it's really, really stiff. Double hinge on the knee, ladies and gentlemen, and a swivel in the boot, and of course all the problematic issues with the feet don't seem apparent so far on mine. Granted, yes, I've only had the figures this set out for a few hours or so, but still, I hope ankles aren't going to give me problems down the road when it comes to mime. Um, Rorschach doesn't have the problems that mime would, in theory, have down the road. Um, he is sort, certainly his own sort of construction, so his feet are a little bit more differently set up than what we had with mime. Both figures, like I said, are really good. Painted pretty good, actually. There's more vibrancy, of course, popping out here on mime. The white against the backdrop of the black certainly makes the figure stand a little bit more. I so want to love Rorschach more than I do. Sadly, I don't, and a lot of that is just by decisions that DC Collectibles have made when it comes to the face paint or the mask paint on poor Rorschach's head. A fairly new release, you should be able to find this set currently sitting on the shelves at your local comic book store. Both characters are relatively faithful to the smash hit uh, Doomsday Clock in which the characters appear in. Of course, mentioning the very obvious elephant in the room, I gotta talk a little bit about Rorschach's head once again. Rorschach, by his namesake, is an inkblot. It's by interpretation, it's what you think you see. And yet, what they ended up going with is a very obvious face on Rorschach. It sort of defeats the purpose. And of all his different various looks in Doomsday Clock, I still scratch my head as to figure out why they opted to go with this head sculpt. Sure, his fedora hides most of his face, but it's still very obvious. This is not Rorschach. And I know maybe anyone could say, well, Rorschach did look like this in the comic in one or two panels perhaps, but again, much like Rorschach is, his face is always changing, it's always moving around, and never is there really ever a time where his face so looks so much like a face as it's done here on this figure. I feel as if anything, this head sculpt, this paint that they went with, might have been a brainstorming idea, somebody might have just doodled it out on paper, but it escapes me to think that this would have made the top three, or even worse, made the final cut for this is the look that they wanted Rorschach to have. I know, I know, I'm beating a dead horse. Don't, don't really like saying that. But at least you can use the fedora to keep it relatively low on his face that it doesn't show as much of the hideous uh, decision that DC Collectibles went with when they went with this head sculpt, or I don't want to keep saying head sculpt, the paint application on poor Rorschach's face. Still, if you can overlook that little hiccup, it's a nice little set to pick up for yourself. Longevity, of course, for the ankles on mine will still be something that's going to be sitting in the back of my mind. How long is this figure going to be in my collection before I start having problems with the ankles? So far, so good. As I am looking at these figures, hoping that nothing's going to fall over in final looks, we're going to wrap things up rather quickly. Today we were having a look at the DC Collectibles Doomsday Clock. This was Rorschach and Mime Action Figure 2-Pack, which, like I said, fairly new. You'll be able to find it now at your local comic book store. Price point will vary, of course, from store to store, place to place, country to country. But here in Canada, it's about a $50 to $54 price point, which works out that these figures are about $28 a piece, which is on average what we normally pay for single card releases from DC Collectibles anyways. Now, you want to go back and have a look at some of my other DC Collectibles reviews. Say primarily, you want to go back and have a look at some of my DC Essentials lineups. Well, don't worry. There's a playlist for both. And uh, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. Certainly, more videos will be coming your way, guys. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.